Now this video is all about the cost of prototyping a new physical product idea. We're going to look at four different examples and hopefully one of those is similar to the idea that you're considering developing so you get an idea of what your costs might be. Now please do watch the end of this video because I'm going to share my top three pieces of advice for how you can minimise the cost of prototyping your product and given that prototyping is often the most expensive part of product development, this is clearly crucial. Now prototypes are generally expensive and the reason is they're entirely bespoke. They've never been done before and therefore a lot of work has to go into working out how the components can be made, how it can be assembled and it's all done as a one-off. So inevitably there are challenges and problems along the way that have to be solved. And this all means that the costs add up and you end up often spending thousands of pounds on each prototype. It's worth also saying that often one prototype isn't enough. Famously, Dyson produced over a thousand prototypes of his first vacuum cleaner and even the latest Dyson Zone product, they made over 500 prototypes. Now, often for entrepreneurs and startups, that's simply unaffordable and we've developed a bespoke process that minimizes the number of prototypes. But you should still expect a minimum of two prototypes on a simple product and on a complex product it could be as much as four or five prototypes to work out all of the issues before that can then go into production. Let's look at those four examples now. Meal kit is a device for portioning out your carbs and uh, proteins uh, as part of controlling your diet. It's a relatively simple product with no electronics or textiles. Now, a basic prototype of this to test form and functionality and fit would be around £1,800. It would have a rough surface finish because it would be 3D printed. It wouldn't be in the final colours, but it would enable you to test the core functionality. And once all that have been confirmed and the size of the compartments are correct, then you go into a higher fidelity prototype, which then would be in the right colours and would be more representative of the final product. But that prototype would be more expensive and would cost around three and a half thousand pounds. Let's look at the next example. This is the Ecri Shoe Shine device. It has an electric motor in there, some very basic electronics, and about 12 or 15 plastic components, which are all bespoke uh, for that product. Now again, a basic prototype of that would probably be around £3,000. It wouldn't have the nice soft rubber feel touch points. Uh, it wouldn't have the final slightly frosted end caps, but it would be representative of the overall size. It would work and function correctly and would enable you to test all of that. You could then go on to produce the higher fidelity prototype that was with the nice rubber finish and all the final colours and textures in the plastics and that would cost more like five, five and a half thousand pounds. This next product we're looking at is Baxley Bags. It's a rucksack, um, no electronics or anything like that in it, but it would still cost around three thousand pounds for a basic initial prototype to test the overall functionality, form, size ergonomics and then if you wanted a high fidelity prototype with all the branding with the final fabrics um, and with a lot of the finer detail and a higher quality of stitching then you'd be looking at more like four and a half thousand pounds and that's indicative of most rucksack or gym bag style products so this last example is an automatically folding and unfolding push chair obviously much more complex than anything we've looked at so far it's got electronics textiles tubular metal sections and plastic mouldings. It also has obviously much more complex functionality. So a basic prototype to test the core functionality but not look like the final product in terms of the finish would be somewhere around £12,000. Now for a high fidelity prototype with all the final fabrics, the branding, the finish on the mouldings and tubes correct for the production finish, you're looking more like 20 to 25 thousand pounds. So that gives you a good idea as to the overall cost of prototyping something much more complex. 
Now I said at the beginning of this video that I would share my top three pieces of advice for developing a prototype and keeping your costs minimized. Piece of advice number one, do as much before prototyping as possible. It's a lot cheaper to change a design in virtual modeling in terms of 3D software or early stage sketch work than it is to change a prototype. Try and work out as much about the design as you possibly can do before you embark on expensive physical prototypes. Second piece of advice, first prototypes should always be low fidelity, should be minimized in terms of cost and should be the bare minimum requirement to test your core functionality and make sure that the key innovation actually works. In fact, if you can do a basic physical model and prove that functionality even sooner, then that's better again. With the Equery product, our basic physical model was simply a piece of wood with some different sized motors so that we could test the speed and the torque and get that correct before we ever invested in a Mark I prototype. And that obviously minimizes your cost. Third piece of advice, do your market research before prototyping. What you don't wanna do is invest in an expensive prototype, go and test it with the market and find out that there's something fundamental that needs to change. Always do that market research earlier with the images of the virtual CAD model or the sketch concept development work. Get the feedback, alter the design and then make your prototype. Now with market research, it is critical that you protect your intellectual property and you don't do anything that's going to invalidate your intellectual property applications further down the line. Do get in touch with me at the link in the description if you want to discuss that in more detail. So prototyping is only one part of the overall product development cost. Do check out my next video where I go through everything from sketch right the way through to production readiness and talk about the overall costs of the whole process.